Well, no, Pfizer's still guessing what this video is about. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Welcome to In The Loop. Well, welcome to the Waterkiss line for our Steam Illuminations press launch. Now, by the time you've seen this, Steam Illuminations will have well and truly kicked in. But before we talk about that, as always, it's time for a quick fire look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Well, starting off with Canadian Civic's tender, works going swimmingly actually. They've got the electrics being plumbed in at the moment. Along the bottom you may notice actually all the pipework has uh, mysteriously disappeared since the last time we saw it. That's because it is currently on a pallet, they're going to put the undercoat on and then mount it up to do that final coat. So um, yeah, progress is going extremely well with this tender. Now looking at the tender for 75079, uh, last time we saw it they finished all the riveting, it has now been painted and they're currently doing the horn guide alignment. So essentially they just need to ensure that the axle boxes will fit in perfectly and also won't wear excessively and allow for the grease lubrication on either side. Needless to say, it's a very precision job. Now on the line of horn guides, with 499's uh, pony truck here, they're also doing some alignment and machining work. Now this one's a little bit different, so they're actually machining in situ. With the 75, the liners essentially are put on separately, so you can machine those on a separate workbench and then put those on. This one is all one casting, so using this um, fantastic rig here, they can machine it, so in theory, once it's done, the axle boxes can go straight in. Now over to the boiler shop where we have our little tank engine. The guys here have been riveting the fire hole door ring. So essentially this is a, a metal ring which is sandwiched in between the inner and outer firebox and essentially creates that watertight seal and the fire hole door goes on top. At the front of the boiler, some rivets were identified as too much corroded to continue. So they've been cut out and new rivets will be put in place. And this is where the smoke box bolts onto the front of the boiler. Looking at 75079's boiler, you may notice there's a few new plates welded on the outside. Uh, here's the old one. This is where the washout plug screws in and some star cracking was identified. And well, really the only thing you can do is cut it out, weld a new one in and drill a new, a new hole, which is well, exactly what they've done. Now on the inside of the firebox, those lap plates we've saw being ready to weld have been welded in now, tick welded and one of them has started the kind of cleaning up process. There's still a bit of work to go, but some really good substantial progress being made. On the 75's boiler, I mentioned about star cracking, and we've got a similar issue on this one here, and essentially it's due to um, the expansion and contraction of the metal. The only thing you can do when it's identified is drill the holes out, plug it with new weld, grind that down, and then re-drill the holes for the stays, which is what we're doing at the moment. Looking at Canadian Pacific, the flexible stays we saw being fitted last time, they've been reamed and tapped, and you can see the ends sticking out in the thermic siphons. The next stage will be to essentially tool them into the boiler, make that nice steam and watertight seal. Well, this is more spacious than the last time we saw it. We're inside the engine room of Lion, uh, without the engine. The generator is currently waiting for some work, so the engine is stored, and the guys here are taking the opportunity to give inside a really good deep clean. Below is the sump, and uh, normally what happens when you lift engines out is there's normally a pile on of people waiting to get spanners and whatever tools that have dropped in there over the years. I believe they did quite well and didn't actually have to find too much. Now, if you haven't already watched a video of the generator being lifted out, I highly recommend it. It's an incredibly satisfying watch, and it's one of those ones where you know there's been lots of work going on in the background, but it just comes out so easily. A true testament to the professionalism of these guys. Now, as a bonus, we've had a new locomotive join us for a while. Lady of Legend, the St. Class. Thanks to our friends from the Dickcott Railway Centre. And she started being kitting out with lights. So there's a very good possibility you'll be able to ride behind her on one of the steam illuminations trains. Oh, while we're by the steam train, there's, um, there's one more thing we've got to show you. So since it's steam illuminations and there's an element of razzle dazzle, um, we utilise one of our steam cranes to hang a giant glitter disco ball at the top. So when you go through Rockley, keep an eye out on that. And incidentally, I haven't fact checked this, but I'm pretty sure this is probably the first steam crane that's had a glitter ball hung from it. And I have to admit, it does look pretty good. Anyway, back to the main event. 
Well, a lot happening down here at the Waterkestein and exciting news nonetheless. Now, it's November going into December, so it must be time for steam illuminations. It's already kicked off with not one, but two trains for you guys. We have our usual steam illuminations mix, voiced by X Factor voiceover man himself, and a new one for this year. For our over 18s market, we have the party train. Some absolutely banging tunes, working from the 60s to the present day. And we did actually have a taste of it. And my God, it was good. Well worth a visit. Details are online. The steam illuminations train will be the first two round trips of the evening. The party train will be the third round trip on most nights. So do check the website for information and to book. Now tonight is our press launch for Steam Illuminations, where we invite members of the UK media down to have a ride on the train and see what the fuss is all about. And um, we're yet to see anyone walk away disappointed. They got a taste of the Steam Illuminations trip and the party train as well. And needless to say, it's a really good night. So I think there's only one way to end this, a really satisfying time lapse of them putting this train together. And of course, a few cheeky drone shots.